Yeah, this is a lecture number uh, 23 on drip irrigation. So, in this we will be uh, uh, I mean knowing uh, how to design a drip irrigation system. So, in the previous uh, lectures we have been talking on uh, sprinkler irrigation system. So, the main uh, I mean uh, design wise the main difference in sprinkler and drip irrigation. So, in the sprinkler you get the discharge is you know the more right uh, whereas, the drip we are expecting the uh, water running out as drip by drip or drop by drop ok. So, uh, through an emitter ok. So, here the sprinklers are being replaced with the drippers and the laterals the mains are uh, replaced with you know tiny pipes ok. And then uh, we, we have the since the water has to you know uh, pass through you know smaller diameter pipes and smaller uh, you know the openings. So, the water should be as clean as possible. So, compared to even uh, uh, sprinkler irrigation. So, we have some extra pumping uh, extra filtration uh, uh, you know units in, in case of uh, drip irrigation. So, the but the de design wise almost similar. So, we are going to see some uh, additional components we are going to use some of the calculations uh, from uh, uh, sprinkler uh, design ok. So, the drip irrigation if you look at this uh, picture. So, the drip irrigation as I said it is a water source right this is a water source and from the water source it passed through a, a sand separator this is the sand separator or cyclone filter. So, where the heavier particles or sand particles are going to settle down or separated and then the clean water goes into the uh, sand filter and uh, and uh, most of the you know the the bacteria even the clay particles are going to separated out and from there there is a screen filter. So, from there the water passes through the main line or sub main or this is the main line and this is the sub main and these are the laterals and each lateral will have drippers right at a definite uh, uh, intervals or a space and there is a air valve to release air present in the in the system ok and at the at this is the end stop. So, that water uh, will not pass through this right. So, uh, otherwise so this is pretty much similar to your uh, sprinkler irrigation. So, the sprinklers are being replaced with the drippers and then uh, and then otherwise almost similar ok. So, the next how to uh, design this system. Uh, so, here before that uh, basic information like like uh, online emitter or uh, dripper system. So, online emitter or dripper system. So, there are drip irrigation systems or uh, different kinds. So, this is one uh, kind uh, this is one type. So, the drippers are fixed uh, externally on the lateral uh, at the designed spacing. So, here these are the drippers. So, the drippers are colored based on the uh, uh, discharge uh, from each uh, you know the dripper. So, the black one has two for example, here the black one has 2 LPH and uh, the blue one 4 LPH, yellow one 8 LPH and, and, and also this uh, green one L, L, uh, 8 LPH this is a pressure compensating kind. So, uh, so, this will uh, give so easier to choose for, for the former uh, based on the color. So, then uh, the dripper spacing can be changed at any time. So, only thing here you can take this out and uh, put it in other spacing ok uh, based on the based on the, the plant uh, growing and based on the, uh, the time of the plant growing period. And commonly used for horticultural or uh, crops like mango, coconut, citrus, oranges, you know lemon, bananas and all these or, or, uh, orchard crops uh, for orchard crops you can use the uh, online emitting system ok. So, the next is 
uh, one is on, online and uh, other one is emitting pipe system. So, here the dripper which is a uh, present inside the pipe. So, the previous case online. So, online this is outside, this is inline. So, this is inside. Okay. So, this is the pipe uh, or the lateral uh, tape, uh, whereas the dripper which is present inside. So, the water pass from you know with this opening and slowly takes the long path okay, and finally, it comes out. Okay. So, that way uh, this is called inline drip system. So, drippers are fixed and uh, you cannot you know change during the uh, growing season. Okay. Then once installed the dripper spacing cannot be changed and very effective for row crops like cotton, sugar cane, groundnut and vegetables and uh, floriculture. Uh, because uh, so here the main problem is there is a lot of uh, I mean the if you are installed in the field the problem is the blockages and rodents, uh, rodent effect and all other things vegetable crops. But here uh, uh, if you use this kind of things, so that damage will be reduced. Okay. And then the next is, so the next is point source emitters. So, that this can be classified as uh, long path and orifice type and pressure compensating. So, the point source emitters for example, here. So, this is the point source emitter. So, this is the uh, drip lateral and point source emitter and there is uh, another is called the line source emitters. So, we have seen the point source and line source the previous slides. The point source long path and orifice and pressure compensating emitters. So, these emitters could be you know uh, point source a long path uh, or pressure compensating. So, the classification depends on this equation. So, the q is equal to q is the discharge here which is equal to k into p power x p is the pressure. So, uh, x. So, based on the k uh, uh, based on k and x are the uh, constants for specific emitter. So, based on x value you decide whether it is a laminar flow emitter type or if x equal to 1 this is a laminar flow emitter x is equal to 0.5 this is the orifice type emitter or if x is equal to 0 that is a pressure compensating. Uh, so, suppose in this equation x is equal to 0. So, the, you, you get q is equal to k that means, there is no pressure effect on the discharge. Okay. So, that is called pressure compensating. Uh, whereas, line source you have a tape kind right the tape or the tubing kind and emitters are uh, just like we have seen uh, the before the emitters are present here the openings right. It would be is see this this is the path if you can clearly see how this, this kind of long path again. Okay. Uh, so, the next yeah here in this graph if you clearly see so, this is the pressure right uh, this is its p and emitter discharge q right. So, this is for different kind of emitters. So, this is for uh, for example, here is a line here you look at here the k value 0 0.648 and x equal to 0 0.63. Okay. So, you from this chart you can clearly you know um, select uh, a discharge on knowing the k and x values. Okay. So, for example, here uh, the pressure is 3 kilo Pascal right a hitting 0.4 uh, x equal to this is orifice type I am going to expect the discharge from that particular emitter. Uh, will be like uh, 18 liter per hour. Okay. So, this graph is very useful uh, for knowing the uh, pressure and uh, the type of emitter and the corresponding discharge. Okay, so, the and the line source emitters you have just seen line source emitters it could be like porous pipe or tape that discharge water along this entire length. So, for example, this is a, a line source. So, these are the openings this is a porous pipe. So, water can simply uh, you know uh, emit through a small openings the end uh, and the discharge could be along the line. So, primarily used for row crops okay. so, uh, sometimes you see the bubblers discharging into the furrows. So, and mono walled 
it could be a mono wall this is a mono wall right and uh, the the by wall so this is the twin wall you also by wall so here this is the main pipe so water initially enters through this pipe uh, uh, this is uh, another wall so then enters through the last wall okay so that you can reduce the 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 flow rate because it's taking long path from one end to another one is instead of uh, you know discharging immediately so it is taking some time uh, in the the second wall and releasing it so that you can uh, reduce the you know discharge further okay so the, the next is the drip la uh, irrigation laterals we are talking about the laterals so main it delivers water from main line and sub mains to the emission devices it's kind of a uh, conveyance you know uh, the system from water source to the emitter devices and material generally pvc and diameter for point source emitters it could be 10 to 20 uh, mm uh, for line source emitters it's more than 20 mm because you have to accommodate uh, the uh, emitters inside the pipe and this is designed to maintain acceptable variation of emission device discharge along the uh, length okay so so the lateral should be designed in such a way that so the discharge in the emission should not be affected okay so manufacturers uh, efficient coefficient of variation right determines the acceptability so we we have some values so cv values that is uh, coefficient of variation so if the coefficient of variation is close to the uh, so when you test that in in, in the field uh, if that is close to your you know manufacturers so then it is working well okay so that is a uh, good one so the next okay so uh, let us go to the previous slide so here I would like to explain this. So, the CV the coefficient of variation is uh, determined uh, as CV is equal to q 1 square plus q 2 square plus q 1 uh, so q i square this is the last one of course okay. uh, uh, is equal to n q uh, n q bar square power 1 by 2 and this q bar uh, n minus 1 half. Okay. So, you have number of emitters here emitter 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 this is q 1, q 2, q 3, q 4, q 5. Okay. So, then collect the discharge for a particular pressure P okay, for a particular pressure P they collect the discharges and then use this equation to find out what is the coefficient of variation for the particular the pressure. Okay. So, then Okay, so, C V for the manufacturers uh, coefficient of variation and average uh, and is the number of emission devices tested. So, A S A E, so it is now A S A B E, uh, American Society of Agricultural Engineers, American Society of Agriculture and Biological Engineers. So, it has recommended uh, the C V value ranges and the classification. So, point source emitters if it is less than 0 0.05 that is a, uh, a good you know uh, and it is a working good. Okay. So, then uh, 0 0.05 to 0 0.1 that is average if it is more than 0 0.15 CV range. So, that will be unacceptable. Okay. So, for line source so the CV value less than 0 0.1 is good and more than 0.2 it is a marginal to uh, unacceptable. So, so when you buy the uh, emitter so you have to test it in the field and see and find out what is Q uh, C V and compare with the manufacturers and look at this table. So, then you will know whether the emitter works good uh, or not okay, that particular uh, emitter. Okay. So, the next emission uniformity so that is E u which is equal to 1 minus 1.27 by square root of N e into C v uh, q mean by q average. 
So, this is uh, denoted with percentage. So, n is the number of points or centimeters per emission point. So, uh, so emission point suppose here is the tree right. So, the tree and you have uh, this is emission point, but in the emission point you have you know number of emitters. Okay. So, this is a dip tape you have you know number of emitters which are wounded right used to get the uh, desired discharge. Okay. So, then you can estimate the, uh, the emission uniformity for the particular spot using this equation. So, minimum emitter discharge rate in the system then average design emitter discharge rate and you can estimate em emission uniformity for that particular uh, emission spot. And similarly you can use for the entire system. Okay, so, the next is the recommended ranges of for design emission uniformity. So, emitter type uh, point source on permanent uh, crops uh, and then uh, point source on permanent or semi permanent crops. Permanent crops are like the orchard crops. Uh, so, once it is installed it, it goes like you know, uh, you know 10 years 15 years something like that. So, this is almost permanent crops. And line source emitters on annual row crops, for example, vegetable crops and other things. So, the space is so here the A, so that means more than 4 meter, and B, the spacing is less than 2 meter. And this soil topography that is important, uh, C, so less than 2 percent uniform slope, right and the slope greater than 2 percent that is undulating slope, the steep slope right, the steep slope greater than 2 percent and it could be undulating. So, in that case you can clearly see the EU range for arid areas. So, that is uh, 90 to 95 percent in case of point source on emitter crops that is uh, greater than 4 meter spacing and uniform right, less than 2 percent slope and you can achieve 90 to 95 percent uh, emission uniformity. Similarly, you can find out the line source emitters on annual crops for uniforms less than 2 percent slope and you can achieve 80 to 90 percent. Okay. So, this table is very important uh, to know the emission uniformity uh, for knowing the emitter type and then uh, soil topography. So, for example, here uh, for the following data the compute the emission uniformity for drip lateral for an arid region and check whether the design is acceptable or not. So, given data is this. So, coefficient of variation is given this is uh, designed and q min and q average in the system and n is equal to 1 okay. and uh, uniform uh, terrain with slopes less than 2 percent. Right. So, use this equation uh, u is equal to 100 into 1 minus 1.27 into square root of n e into C v uh, q mean by q average. So, there then you get uh, substitute all the, uh, the values are given just substitute it and you get uh, 82.8 percent. If you go back to the table, so for this particular emitters. So, uh, the criteria is we are expecting 90 percent of emit emission uniformity, but you get 82.8 percent emission uniformity. So, how to how to increase the emission uniformity? So, you can uh, bring the equation uh, you look at this equation right how to increase uh, the E u value. So, one thing we can do is you can increase C v coefficient of variation. So, sorry you can uh, decrease C v because this is 1 minus. So, this this uh, uh, term should be lower. So, this term should be lower so that it will be high. So, how do we make it lower C v will, will be lower coefficient of variation and N e should be higher so that it will be lower. So, N e is uh, what increasing N e that is fine and decreasing C v. Okay. And q mean q average. So, if, if q mean q average will be the, the, the difference is smaller. So, then still you can increase uh, E u or using large diameter and shorter laterals, large diameter and shorter laterals that will uh, reduce the friction losses and using pressure compensating emitters. 
So, the pressure variation will be compensated or it will be uh, less in the or, or 0 or less even in the, in the system the whole system. So, so that you can increase the emission uniformity there. Okay, so, this uh, plots shows so here in this plot the number of emitters and E and the emission uniformity here. So, number of emitters and emission uniformity. So, you can see the uh, different C V values. So, as the C V is increasing right as C V is increasing. So, N A should be more right N A should be more in order to. So, uh, so if C V is increasing coefficient of uh, variability increasing. So, you have to increase the number of uh, you know drippers for, uh, for getting the uh, more emission uniformity. Okay. So, or otherwise uh, for a fixed number of uh, you know for a fixed number of N A like 8. Okay. So, if you, if you see this, so uh, the, C, the lower C V will have higher emission uniformity. So, you can also think in that way. So, this next plot uh, clearly shows this is the exponent in, in this equation. Okay. So, in this equation the uh, exponent is the x we are talking about. So, exponent in the equation versus emission uniformity. Okay. So, here E u is high for uh, emitters with lower x. So, if you see this x value x is increasing from here to here. So, the E u is decreasing. Okay. So, for smaller x values you get higher E u values here okay. and also uh, the, the, the corresponding C v values right. So, for example, I have uh, 0 0.5, 0 0.5 is the orifice type okay. for orifice type uh, emitter right. So, as C v is decreasing your uh, E v is going to increase. So, the next is the pressure variation along a pipeline. So, this is important in order to find out the uh, pump capacity or pump uh, power right H p of the power. Okay, so, here clearly it shows pressure variation pipe this is P d this is pressure at the uh, downstream that will be pressure at the upstream minus k into H 1 plus or minus delta z. So, so, here H 1 is energy loss in the pipe this is energy loss in the pipe and delta z is elevation difference right positive for uphill and negative for downhill as in case of you know uh, sprinkler and k value generally 9.81. Okay. So, H 1 uh, H 1 can be estimated using H 1 is equal to capital F into H 1 uh, some capital H 1 plus M 1. So, M 1 is a minor head losses right. So, F is a friction factor or uh, a constant right and H 1 is the friction loss. So, friction loss. So, this we can estimate by using uh, the procedure uh, we have seen in sprinkler irrigation in the previous lecture. So, so F is a constant uh, it is the function of number of outlets and method used to estimate H 1. Okay. And then H 1 friction head loss uh, M 1 minor uh, through fittings it, this we can get from the tables okay, fittings and all other things. So, let us see how to estimate H 1 then. Okay. So, F anyway we, uh, we use the same principle uh, for finding out in the sprinkler we found capital F. So, similarly we, we estimate F uh, in drip. Now, H 1 uh, how to estimate H 1. So, H 1 uh, use the equations like uh, the three equations uh, Darcy Wisbuck, Hazen William and Skobeck equation. So, those equations will be used and then uh, so, H 1 is equal to K C L Q power M D 2 M plus N M N uh, uh, values are given right and C value also given and uh, here the k value the friction factor depends on the pipe material 
So, that we will see, uh, we will calculate in the next slide. So, L is the length of the pipe, uh, Q is the discharge, D diameter of the pipe, C m n constant we can get from the table which is uh, given in uh, lecture, lecture number 22. Okay. And then, so here for a uh, trickle irrigation, Darcy Wisbeck equation is preferred and the constant C m n are from the table. Okay. Uh, so, the next is how to estimate k value. right? So, the k value here uh, Darcy Wisbeck k is equal to 0 0.811 into small f by g. Okay. f is a friction factor, uh, g is acceleration due to gravity. So, so here um, if you know the Reynolds number n r, right? so n r if it is 2000, so uh, a small f is equal to 64 by n r. Uh, or if it is 2000 and uh, uh, 1 lakh that is f is equal to 0 0.32 n r for minus 0 0.25 and if it is more than you know 1 lakh. So, you can use this equation. Okay. So, from this knowing n r you can estimate small f okay, and then finally, the k value. Okay. So, here uh, that is fine. So, now there is a if you are look uh, if you look at the uh, point source emitters. So, this is the the diameter of the lateral and the point source if you want to insert this. So, it will have a burp right it will it will have a burp in it right in order to push. So, this kind of burp. Okay. So, the water has to pass through this or the flowing water which has an obstruction right in the pipe. So, that uh, uh, is going to have an additional head losses. So, how to estimate the head loss due to these burps. Okay. So, here in this uh, graph we clearly show the if you know the inside diameter of the lateral the emitter uh, connection loss equivalent that is C L will be calculated. Okay. So, then uh, then you can uh, put the equation, uh, you can use the equation to find out the H1. Okay. So, how to estimate H1 here when the figure losses is equivalent to pipe length. So, if you remember, so uh, the, the pipe uh, the losses will be estimated in terms of uh, equivalent pipe lengths. Okay. So, this is multiplied by number of uh, burps uh, added to L in Darcy Wisbeck equation. And then finally, you can use this equation. Okay. So, it is like so the main equation is Darcy Wisbeck equation. We are going to use this equation to find out the friction head loss. So, here the length L right is the uh, pipe length like the lateral uh, length as well as the the uh, friction head loss due to burps. So, how do we so, here we are going to convert that into length units the burp. So, this is L 1 plus L 2 for example. So, L 1 L 2 is the equivalent length uh, pipe length due to burps and L 1 is the length of the uh, lateral. So, how to estimate this L 2? So, L 2 uh, will be estimated here uh, there is a graph. So, if you know the inside diameter of the, the pipe and you can estimate the C L. So, so, here it is given for C L and diameter. So, C L and diameter D. Okay. So, for size for large size for large size. So, A values uh, here the, there is a equation uh, of 5. Okay. This is a different units and uh, so this is the equation we will be using for example, 0 0.91 d power sorry, d power minus 1 point 93915. Okay. So, this equation will be uh, we will be using to estimate the equivalent length okay. mm, no equivalent means that C L we will be using the C L value. So, so, knowing the C L and if you if you know the number of drippers n right. So, that will give the the total and you can uh, add to this one. Okay. Good. 
So, or you can directly use this uh, graphs to get the uh, C L value. Okay, this is using equation or you can also use directly for so knowing the inside diameter d you can get the uh, C L value right. So, C L multiplied by number of drippers you get this L 2 what I was uh, talking about right. Okay. So, then uh, you get the L value capital L value. So, the capital L here is the length of the lateral okay, and the uh, equivalent length of each burp multiplied with the number of uh, emitters. Okay. Well, so this is an example if you look at the compute head loss due to pipe friction. Uh, in a drip lateral with online emitters for the following data 16 mm internal diameter, uh, 200 meter long lateral, right? The, uh, the drippers are spaced at 1 meter. So, you have to design discharge each emitter at 1 liter per hour, design discharge of each emitter 1 liter per hour, and water temperature is 20 degrees Celsius. So, the total discharge here, uh, you know, the discharge from each. Uh, or lateral okay now e each dripper and there are 200 uh, meter long so and each 1 meter you have one dripper there are 200 drippers okay and uh, so converting units you get 3.33 liter per minute so knowing the the discharge and uh, area you can calculate the velocity okay so knowing the velocity you can the estimate the Reynolds number. Okay. So, here in this case the Reynolds number rho V d by mu. So, that will give the value Reynolds number 4406 and since n r is between 2000 to 10 power 5. So, we are going to use the first equation f is equal to uh, 0.32 n r power minus 0.25 and the second equation we are going to use second equation. So, then uh, once you know the f value and you get f by g g 9.81 and you get k value. Okay. So, correcting L in Darcy Wisbeck equation. So, L is equal to 200 this is the meter and number of emission devices into C L. Okay. C L is due to burps equivalent length due to burp. So, since each emitter will have one burp. So, we are going to have number of emission devices multiplied by C L. So, from the figure the previous figure C L is equal to 0.36 feet or 0.11 meter. So, this is based on the internal diameter right and you get 0.36 feet. So, now L is equal to 200 burps uh, 200 emitters and equivalent length of uh, each burp that will uh, have a friction head loss 0.11. So, you will be 222 meter long you have to consider for estimating the friction head loss. So, H 1 use this uh, generalized equation uh, if you are using Darcy Wisbeck equation the corresponding m n values will be uh, accounted and finally, you get 2.12 as uh, friction head loss. So, f is equal to 0.33 this is from the uh, table which is in the next slide if you look at. So, and minor head minor losses uh, will be uh, considered as 0 and you get H 1 is equal to 0.7. So, f is equal to 0.33. So, you can get it from this table. So, this table indicates so number of outlets on uh, this column, right? These are the number of outlets, and then uh, and then uh, so the value of f is used when the uh, the distance to the first sprinkler. So, distance of the first sprinkler equal to the sprinkler uh, head spacing. So, you have just like a sprinkler uh, we have like you know the first opening. So, this is the first opening and then based on the, so the spacing S m and if this spacing right sorry if this spacing will be equal to the spacing between the sprinklers. So, then this table will be used. So, for this particular table if you see 
Now, in our case, the bobs number of bobs are uh, 200 or number of impedances are 200, and uh, for m is equal to 2, this m m values uh, that's friction head uh, formula if you remember. So, m is equal to 2, you get 0 0.333. So, the same thing we used in the in the previous. Uh, Sorry. So, the same thing we, we used in the okay. So, here look at this. So, the point uh, f is equal to 0 0.33 from the, the table. Okay. So, with this, so this lecture is uh, over. So, the basically in, in drip irrigation design, uh, what exactly we did is. So, uh, the basic thing is we have to estimate the friction head losses. Okay. From the friction head loss and knowing the discharge from each emitter right? and you will be estimating you know the total uh, uh, you, you know the, the e, uh, from knowing the number of emitters and their bobs you will be estimating the equivalent length of uh, you know the equivalent length due to the bobs that is causing the friction head loss. Okay. So, the total length will be the lateral length and burp length the total burp length uh, equivalent length. So, that will be plugged into the Heisen William uh, or, or Darcy Wishbeck equation you get friction head loss. Okay. So, the friction head loss to operate the pumping system you get right. And then uh, we have also seen the type of uh, emitters or uh, point uh, em point source emitters and line source emitters and uh, the so the the uh, emitters are defined uh, based on the uh, colors okay so suppose the black color lower discharge uh, versus you know uh, um, green color the higher discharge versions okay so uh, it is easier for uh, people to identify the particular discharge uh, based on the color. Okay. So, in the we have more hydraulic design the drip irrigation design for the entire uh, if you have in the banana crop or any orchard crop how to design. So, that we are going to see in the next class. So, thank you.